Hi, my name is Preet and in this video today I will be talking about the dam and energy in relation to Miles Canyon. I would like to acknowledge that Miles Canyon is situated on the traditional lands of the Kwanlin Dun First Nation and the Tonkwatan Council. If you've ever visited Miles Canyon or Kwanlin before, you can imagine that the water running through the canyon moves pretty fast. But could you imagine that there was a time when it moved even faster? Here's an example. This is a photo of Miles Canyon before the White Horse Dam was built. This is the White Horse Dam today and the fish ladder. Construction on the dam began in 1957, which at the time cost $7.8 million to build. The hydro dam was built due to the demand of energy for White Horse's growing population. In 1958, the first unit started generating power. How does a hydro dam work? Well, firstly, the dam is able to stop the river and create a reservoir of water. This reservoir of water is able to flow into the dam. In Whitehorse's case, that reservoir is Schwatka Lake. Secondly, the flow of the water is then released and it is able to turn the turbines. The turning turbines are connected to the generator which produces electricity. The dam did not only have an effect on the flow of the White Horse Rapids, but it also affected the salmon and other fish in the river. The latter, built in 1959, had the purpose of helping the migrating Chinook salmon population get through the dam. It is the world's longest wooden fish ladder. Each salmon that passes through the fish ladder is counted. The Yukon River Chinook salmon come all the way from the Bering Sea. Those who manage to make it through the fish ladder would have traveled over 2,800 kilometers. Chinook salmon are born in freshwater. They spend about a year in freshwater before making their journey to the ocean. After the three to four years in the ocean, they begin their journey back home against the swift current of the river to spawn where they themselves were born. There are six different types of Pacific salmon, including the Chinook. Others are pink, sockeye, coho, chum, steelhead. The Chinook are the biggest and strongest. They are also called the king. They are the only salmon strong enough to make it up to Whitehorse and Miles Canyon. The First Nations would set up fish camps in order to fish the Chinook salmon going through the river, particularly before Canyon City was considered part of the gold rush. It was a pivotal fishing camp for the First Nations. They would fish for salmon during the early fall run. Canyon City is particularly close to Miles Canyon. What about the other fish in Miles Canyon? This is an Arctic grayling. Arctic grayling can live up to be 32 years old and are one of the most popular fish to fish for on the Yukon River. You can tell that graylings are either male or female by looking at the length of their dorsal fin. If the fin is usually longer, then the fish is a male. Lake trout, sometimes found in the Yukon River, can live up to be 60 years old and is another popular fish to fish for along with grayling. Another fish that's pretty common are the many kinds of whitefish. This is a lake whitefish. Next time you visit Miles Canyon, think of the fish down below the river, swimming in the fast, fast current. Hope you had a great summer, and thanks for checking out our videos.